And when it comes to moving forward, my guide through life has always been Winston Churchill. He was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom during World War II, and his active and steadfast resistance to Adolf Hitler, along with his vehement refusal to even consider defeat, helped inspire his nation to victory against Nazi Germany. His strength of character and his determination to never give up, even in the most dire of circumstances, has made him one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. But aside from that, Churchill was also a very funny man. As some of you are aware, Winston Churchill and Mrs. Franklin D. Roosevelt, they were really good friends. And uh, once, while Churchill was staying at the White House, President Roosevelt decided to stop by Churchill's room. The Prime Minister, who had just finished taking a bath, was pacing back and forth in his room completely naked. When Roosevelt rolled into the room and saw Churchill standing in the buff, Churchill calmly replied, You see, Mr. President, I have nothing to hide from you. <laughs> but there was something which Churchill hid from the world. He struggled with what he called the black dog of depression. Researchers and biographers um, have since diagnosed him as someone who struggled regularly with major episodes of depression. Of Churchill's battle with depression, a psychiatrist Anthony Storr said this, only a man who knew what it was to discern a gleam of hope in a hopeless situation, whose courage was beyond reason, and whose aggressive spirit burned at its fiercest when he was hemmed in and surrounded by enemies, could have given emotional reality to the words of defiance which rallied and sustained us during World War II. At the height of the war, Churchill had the full weight of Europe on his shoulders. For a long time, he was, in, in many respects, a lone leader standing against the full onslaught of Adolf Hitler. In studying Churchill's life, his victories and defeats, along with his emotional obstacles and personal challenges, I am perpetually amazed by his indomitable will to fight his way forward. In a speech delivered to the House of Commons on, the, on June 4, 1940, Churchill rallied his beleaguered nation with these words, We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength. We shall never surrender. Now consider the context of these words. Not only was Churchill leading the charge against Nazi Germany, but he was simultaneously leading a charge against his own doubts, his own depression. With that in mind, the following phrase, which is one of his most famous quotes, is given even more power and meaning. Never give in. Never, 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 never. And nothing great or small, large or petty, Never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Now I'd like to, um, I'd like to pause here and be completely candid uh, with you. Um, while writing about depression, I have felt uh, discouraged many times. The process of creating books and blog posts and things about depression and suicidal thoughts and feelings is, is very difficult. It's hard to bring those feelings back up again and try to write about them in a meaningful way. I am often confronted with feelings of despondency, depression, and insecurity. After all, I mean, like I said, I'm a blogger. Who am I? Who am I that the world should care what I have to say? But in those moments of self-doubt, I have often looked to this, this image of Churchill. I have it in my office. He doesn't look back at me. Instead, he looks forward into some distant horizon, as if to say, never give in. Keep moving forward. Now please consider the incredible irony. Here are two leaders faced with tremendous challenges. 
One of them struggles with the darkness of depression. The other is bound to a wheelchair. Had they grown up in Nazi Germany, Hitler would have had both men exterminated for their imperfections. And yet these two men, these two very imperfect men, moved forward. And together they defeated the darkness which had swept across Europe. 